InshaAllah what do we have from our SMC family out there inshaAllah with all their sharing, all the videos and, and uh, productions that are coming out mashallah. Alhamdulillah. And try the languages, all the different languages. If we're finding any errors in it just copy it and email to help me and Nur Muhammad in the subject type in what the error was, that it didn't do the Urdu correctly, didn't do this correctly, whatever it is they can go back and review it and fine tune it why it's not picking up inshaAllah. Because we're b building our own databases, this is not off of the ChatGPT and, and their franchise. So alhamdulillah. What we got out there inshaAllah? As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Sayyidi, how to know that a spiritual experience during meditation was true or a distraction from shaitan or our nafs? Uh, better not to focus on it because whether true or not don't let your ego to take a piece of it and then get excited and think highly of oneself. If you see things and different experiences you just negate them and say, Alhamdulillah that I'm not necessary for these things, all I want is to reach to the ocean of power. That I just want to reach the ocean of power in which I feel myself entering into this ocean of lightning and that to be nothing and this lightning to hit me and obliterate me. And we described last night that we're saying this for many years and then people think, oh like when they pray what do you think of when you pray? Because the tafakkur doesn't seem to be like a, a life thing, it's like a meditation thing but we're not hippies and new age people. When we use the word tafakkur it's everything you do. So when you go for your salah because look at now the concept, if you go Allahu Akbar and it's you and Allah, what happened then to Prophet Because that's not our teaching that Prophet must always be the Imam in the Salah. The Prophet is there, I'm behind Prophet and we're praying to Allah You know if you go for Hajj, the rules for Hajj, you have to look at the Kaaba. You're not allowed to close your eyes, why? Because the focus when you're making Salah, so you're praying to Allah focusing on the Kaaba, what more powerful than the Kaaba? Because that's stones. The one that all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nur John. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Allah made with his hands and blew into his spirit. Means that in our heart when we're praying we're always having to visualize Prophet is our Imam. So as soon as you cut that out you're going to cut everybody out. So the one who trained with tafakkur, his whole life is tafakkur that I had nothing, I didn't, I didn't want to be the one praying. I know when I pray I'm ending up in the wrong places. When I sit for zikr I'm ending in the wrong places. If you leave me to myself I will create disaster. The whole concept of tafakkur was that I sat and I made my tafakkur and as soon as I make my connection then I get up and I pray, Allahu Akbar, I visualize the shaykh, the dress of the shaykh and that I'm nothing. And I want to pray where the shaykh is praying. And if I, if I achieve that and achieve that and achieve that, the shaykh is praying and asking Prophet that led me to pray where you pray, to keep me as the dust into your jubbah. And to pray where you pray and all these holy souls they'll come and begin to teach that, I let you to make sujood where I'm making sujood because you're nothing. But if you're something you're now a, a, an identity outside of that reality. 
So negation wasn't just a time to meditate, this life of negation was in everything. When I sit for salah, I'm nothing. And then my shaykh is praying, I'm just in the juppah like a dust. And that he's praying behind Prophet and we are praying to Allah and keeping our state of being nothing. When I sit for zikr, no difference. I sit for zikr, I'm nothing. I'm nothing that my shaykh is sitting for zikr and I'm annihilating myself to be out. If I'm out, I can keep the dress of what the shaykh is being dressed in. And this was, it was in our meditation book. But you know, we have books that nobody reads. So it's not just a, a time to sit down like new age people and, and enjoy like a, a thinking of a tree. It's a whole life of being nothing. In every action negate ourselves. As a result if you're nothing and you're in that dress what happens? All of a sudden you're praying and a tajalli that came upon the shaykh comes upon you. You're sitting in the zikr whatever tajalli is coming upon the shaykh. You sit in the zikr of being nothing and asking to be under their dress, then that tajalli comes upon you. If you keep yourself to be separate then that's a different type of tajalli, it's not achieving that faiz and that's why we have the stages, muhabbat, love and we described that tonight. That's the secret of himma, you have to have love. If you say, Shaykh, I don't have that love then I can't help you. Go to another page or, or do something for yourself that you can figure out how to get love. But once you achieve love, what happens? Hudur, keeping the presence. Is there a time that you're out of hudur? No, because you kept the love and you're always in the hudur. Mean you're sitting driving, you visualize their light upon you to guide you. You're taking a test, visualize their light because it's always there that help me. At work give me himma and every aspect of our life keeping that hudur. If we have the love and the hudur all the time you open the door of fana in which you feel the shaykh's presence is coming and you are leaving. I become thinner and thinner and the shaykh's presence becomes stronger and stronger. At first the shaykh's presence is thin and my presence is very much there, very solid. I want to disappear. If I learn to disappear then the shaykh becomes present and then I become a representative of the shaykh. And that's the system, why? Because uh, once we become representative of the shaykh then we move, move, move into what? We become the representative of these awliya, representative of Sayyidina Mahdi And all the shaykhs become Mahdiyoon, that they represent that light of Imam Mahdi on the earth. They even showed it in the matrix, there's only two players on this earth coming, one will be Dajjal and one will be Sayyidina Mahdi Those who give themselves to Dajjal he will completely operate their eyes, the hadith. You know instead of a voluntary approach to Allah they voluntarily approach the antichrist, the shaitan. As a result what? He became the eyes in which they see, the ears in which they hear, the mouth in which they speak, the hands in which they touch. Look how they're slaughtering children as if it's like candy and popcorn for them. You know the big demon called Malik who would ask for the sacrifice of children, right now they're doing that. Eight thousand they have sacrificed and they're asking for something as a result of that. So you're gonna give yourself to someone, which one is it? If you say nothing and say by default I'll be nobody, it doesn't work that way. The breeze of devils will take you in that direction but when they learn to Meditate, contemplate, Ya Rabbi my life, this body and service to you that let Imam Mahdi dress my ears, my eyes, my tongue, my hands and my feet and they become Mahdiyoon. And that's the only two groups that are going to be on this earth, those whom are under the tajalli of Imam Mahdi 
and those from under the tajalli of the dajjal. There's no third, just you think, <laughs> inshaAllah. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah Please uh, forgive my bad adab Is the love of Sahabil Karam and our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and our love for our beloved Shaykh the first step towards that divine love? Yes, this love also creates a fear of disappointment within our heart Yeah Love for Allah is what got us here قُلْ إِنِي كُنْتُمْ تُوْهِبُونَ Allah. Tell them if they love me, stop, it's not going to be so easy, fatabihuni. Because Allah knows the games of shaitan, they say, oh I love only Allah, oh you're following shaitan, that's a ridiculous garbage because there's no rules, there's no guidance, there's no way to calibrate what are you talking about. That's why Allah stop, qul inni kuntum tuhibun Allah, tell them, it's coming from a qul from a high command of this universe, to mean fatabiyuni, they must follow you. Why? Because that's how Allah is going to calibrate love. Without following you there's no love because there's no discipline, there's no proof. And then what happens, shaitan comes to the person and starts to play with them and that's the danger. But this system that Allah gave to us then it's very clear, they find these ulul am and the ones whom teach from love. When they don't teach from love your heart can't connect. So the ones whom listening to this style of teaching because it's from the human and the human they teach based on love. So other people they don't teach like that, they, they keep calling people kafir and different things and it's not going to make love. And it's not going to teach people through love and you're not going to, to make people to have fear because already they don't fear Allah. Can you teach somebody to fear Allah if they don't believe? Absolutely not because they don't have faith. Fearing Allah only if you have faith. When you have no faith and somebody comes to Allah going to rip you to pieces, put you into fire, put more of a stones on top of you, they kind of laugh at you. Say, what are you talking about? This stuff doesn't even exist and they go out and do more bad things. Nobody fears Allah like that except they have faith. The Ahlul Iman they have fear of Allah The Kufa have no fear of Allah otherwise they wouldn't be doing what they're doing already, their proof is, is, is in their actions. So that's not how it works. The secret that they're giving to us is muhabbat. And the real muhabbat, the real love, it can build mountains and then it becomes actions out of the, the fear of regret and disappointment. They don't want to disappoint Allah inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Is our universe circular with Taseen as nucleus in the center? Also was Kaaba, Qusaini or Adna happened at the outermost boundary of Muhammad Rasulullah What was that? Forget about all, all like philosophy stuff but the atom is enough. Before you want to know the big one, look at the small one. The nucleus is Sayyidina Muhammad because Allah has no shabi, Allah has no likeness. So who could say that's Allah? That would be a shirk. So Allah's power is inside that nucleus. But because it's creation that's Muhammadun Rasulullah and Allah is the power within his heart. As a result of that nucleus every electron must make tawaf. So then you take it to a larger and say, what's the heliocentric understanding? Is the sun is the light. They were worshipping the sun because they were… didn't have the understanding and the reality. 
But the sun represents the light and the light is supreme and the light comes from the light of Prophet So it means all the planets they have to make tawaf on the light, that which is supreme. In the center of the entire created universe, Attarik, what they call the pistol star. Why we have so many surahs about stars? Because our life is to become eternal light, not to just be a planet but to reach eternity and to be a star. And Prophet is the star maker, that's why he described his companions that all of them are like stars, any one of them that you follow you will fi you find guidance. So this is a, a deep reality and we have that in our book, The Rising Sun of the West inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Is the annihilation in the shaykh same as the annihilation in physics where a particle and its antiparticle collide, vanishes and only energy remains? Ooh that's nice I don't know, sounds like you got something there. Yeah, deep, deep reality on the annihilation, right? Because the shaykh holds your trust. If you're able to annihilate yourself means you're entering back into your binary code but you cannot leave yourself to be nothing. So it's not a state of nirvana, I be nothing, 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 no it means anything, nothing shaitan is coming. So you say, I want to be nothing in this room, nothing in this room, nothing, oh shaitan will come into the room and occupy the person. So you're asking, no I'm nothing but my shaykh is coming. That the energy and the hudur and the presence of my shaykh will come to be with me and I will move out of the way. And literally their energy comes and that becomes the hadith and the hadith becomes alive for them, wow. Because this is going to be a gradual dress. When Allah says, I've become their hearing what? He sends one of His servants that now his light enters and I have the hearing of that servant because it's one of the servants already dressed by Hadith al-Qudsi, I'll become the seeing of that servant. So when they make their tafakkur, their shaykh who's one of those servants comes and begins to give the seeing. So the shaykh is hearing through you, seeing through you, trying to speak through you when you get your nafs out of the way. His hands and their power and barakah coming through you and they inspire your qadam to leave this badness of dunya and direct yourself back to Allah And you find your life and your path moving towards your reality, not towards the nightclub. Without that presence these people are struggling immensely with their feet. They're left and right. You imagine right now how many people when they pray they feel nothing and they pray when they're not in tariqah. They think that Allah not listening to them. They don't have any confirmation of love, they don't feel any presence of love, they don't even think Allah is loving. And they pray, they feel nothing, they go on a day-to-day -day and they feel nothing, they have no reassurance on a continuous, they become like abused people whom nothing of gentleness ever touched them. And what happens? People become cold and isolated. But every day, hearing three days a week about love of Allah, love of Prophet mercy of paradise, love of the way, it's nurturing, it secures people and as a result they don't feel they're alone. That's why Allah's ridan satisfaction comes because He's happy with them that you taught them that they're not alone and that I am with them. And that Prophet is with his nation, all you have to do is remember that and keep that love. So it's immensely important in these, in these very difficult days where people are very isolated because of shaitan and as a result they feel nothing, they don't really do anything good so they, they become more and more distant and more and more distant, inshaAllah. 
السلام عليكم سيدي وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله سيدي سيدي فنا is difficult to destroy your nafs how to better be able to self control when daily tests seems like family arguments are constant yeah fana is very difficult if you thought this was going to be easy then yeah that's not correct understanding <laughs> you have to be ground down especially if you're coming like a steak they're going to make you into ground beef So it's not an easy process at all to think, oh I read this book on fana and I'm going to achieve fana next week. People came to tariqah thinking like that too, after two weeks, yeah I think shaykh oh, the fana is going to be difficult for me. <laughs> you think? They, you're going to be ground down like you, like a, you know how they make a ground beef in that grinder, everything in your life is just going to grind and grind and grind, it's grinding anyways. Look at the poor people that are happening on this earth. So do you want it in the way of Allah with a much more softer approach than what's coming onto this earth right now? So the grinding then we try to do ourselves and be patient and understand we're going to be tested, understand we have to have good character and uh, what are the triggers and where are the places that people are going to test my patience and ask for my madad, I have to ask for the madad. And Yeah, it's a whole process, a whole system, it's never was supposed to be easy, it's supposed to be like holding fire in your hand, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, last week you mentioned the reality of Khalifa is before the manifestation of creation through Rasulullah Is that the Adamic Khilafah or Khilafah of Rasulullah as eternal messenger? Yeah that one they, they, they threw it before we ended the subject. So I answered one thing then came back uh, more explanation upon that reality. So Allah want, is a treasure wanting to be known created Muhammadun Rasulullah and this is the only prophecy of Allah is the only representative of Allah When that Muhammadan light was to be revealed to creation, the form of Sayyidina Adam salam was created. And that's when Prophet described Haditha Jabbar that I was a Rasul, I was a messenger of Allah before Adam was between clay and water. So that risalat in the heavens was known but not witnessed behind parda, completely behind a veil in which at that time they thought it's Allah That's why the high level of respect the angels had for that reality and that light. When Allah wanted now to reveal more of His treasure then the creation of Adam and the teaching of Isma Kullaha. But who taught the knowledges? If Prophet was a Rasul before then Prophet taught the knowledges. Why Allah would teach when He has a Rasul? That would not be to the station of Allah to push the Rasul aside and say, now I will teach Adam why he's not the more special than Prophet So means that Prophet is describing from us, for us from behind the parda that when Allah wanted the, the form to start to be known and the vehicle and the knowledges that would be within this form the creation of the Adamic reality. We have Allah's Divinely Presence, the Muhammadan reality and Adamic reality. So these are three hearts. When a Prophet described that, I was created from Allah's light but creation is created from my light. So Allah's essence and the beat of that reality unknown. When Allah wanted to be known become Muhammadun Rasulullah From that light Adamic heart is created and all of us are under the Adamic light to reach back to Muhammadun Rasulullah So these are immensity of 
realities. All knowledge comes from Prophet he is the treasure of Allah Every huruf is Sayyidina Muhammad Every kalam is Sayyidina Muhammad And if all the pen, the trees were pen and all the oceans were ink, his words would never finish. His word being Muhammadun Rasulullah Why? Because Allah says, I gave you the kawthar. I gave you kathiran more than more than even understood these oceans are yours these knowledges that emanate are from your knowledges no one else no one else and they have no limit so prophet is the kawthar so all knowledge comes from sayyidina muhammad the light that was given to Sayyidina Adam was from the light of Prophet as soon as the angels witnessed that light they would be making sujood. Wherever he walked in paradise they would see the light and begin to make sujood until he wanted to see the lights and ask Allah I think it was behind on the head and then Allah moved it to the forehead. And then he said, I want to kiss that light and that blessed light and Allah moved into the thumbs that light. Every time he would kiss and put on to his eyes and praise Sayyidina Muhammad because the origin of his light he knew was from Muhammadun Rasulullah InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam Ramtullah Sayyidi, may Allah reward you best for providing this beautiful source to feed our souls. Sayyidi, in reference to your talk regarding Qalb and Amr, do all awliya receive the commands or aware of all the commands while in Bahar al Qudra or the specific task oriented commands received? Further, if specific awliya are running, the non-human or planet, stars, etc. That not in my my understanding. That's not from anything. That would be from higher central command. The system is a pyramid. That what comes from Allah to Prophet nothing, not an angel, not a spirit, not a jinn will know. That's what we call machine language in the computer systems. That nobody can reach to that level of understanding between Allah and Muhammadun Rasulullah Baina Ahad wa Ahmad is the reality of Muhammad in the meme. Nothing can enter into that. As a result of Prophet what he gives to his qawth and his representative and then from that to the imams and the kutubs and, and the whole structure of the government. And each one takes the reality that they have to take and then issues the command out for the ones below that reality and they take what they need and issue the command out for that reality. So each to their understanding and the level and they don't know themselves and they don't know others depending upon the shara that comes within their heart and their heart and its proximity to Prophet inshaAllah. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum Salaam Rahmatullah In a recent video uh, I heard of Sayyidina Isa Salam referring to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallam as his father. Can you expand on this beautiful reality? In a recent via, via video from our teachings. Yes, <laughs> well I don't think you find anywhere on earth anyone saying that so we get maybe a lot of uh, attacks. But uh, alhamdulillah uh, there's a whole subject that we talked about during the, the different seasons that Sayyidina Isa is, is, is very much talked about and that has to do with the reality that even in his own du'a, Oh my Father who art in heaven. Holy is your name, your kingdom come and your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Anyone who knows the haqqaiq then who, whose kingdom 
who has the kingdom in the heavens? Is Sayyidina Muhammad whose will will be done as it is in heaven? The king in heaven he gives the isharat that whatever Allah wants from his heart who gives the amr? If Allah is not to be witnessed, Allah operates with the power within the heart of Prophet who gives a command to creation is Sayyidina Muhammad Do the angels hear Allah That would be chaos then. If everybody just heard something and started running in 20 different directions, nobody hears anything, only Prophet because he was created to speak for Allah as a result, the command comes from the holy heart of Prophet and then everything through a chain of command. So these are the uloom of the heavens and the realities of the heavens. So who Sayyidina Isa salam was addressing was Nabi Ahmad and that landed a hint of who his reality and his proximity to Prophet and that's why he was telling people, my father, my father, my father. One day that people would understand, who is he talking about his father? And they have knowledges of Prophet but then kuf means that they hid it. Then they started to imply that this was in regards to Allah And that became then their whole system that he's talking that his father is God and that he's the son of God and never would a Prophet of Allah ever make an insinuation that they're a son of a, of a creator and that the creator has a human quality. So he would never say something with the intention of mentioning Allah This was to give hints to people in later days that who his father is and how is he connected to that kingdom when the nation would find out because shortly after Sayyidina Isa salam, the king arrived. That was a, a isharat and guidance that my father's coming and his kingdom is coming and his command will rule this earth. So this was a, a isharat and signs and then Allah gave to us other signs of Sayyidina Maryam Sayyidatina Maryam and that she put her name, only woman who been named in Qur'an and under Surah 19 because 19 had to do with the Ahlul Bayt the 19 letters of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem and the reality of Ahlul Bayt. So she was the hidden Ahlul Bayt in which Allah revealed in Surat Al Maryam that we chose you above all women in creation. Chose for what? Well Allah is choosing people in creation. If He says, you're the best of all women and we chose you then Allah, Allah's love is for Prophet So it must be chosen for the chosen one which is Nabi Mustafa the chosen Prophet of Allah So this is a, the family of Prophet and that's why his maqam is in Rosa Sharif. The Prophet described, next to me in the last days Sayyidina Isa will be buried here next to me. So everyone making ziyarat of Medina to Munawwara, they are giving their salams to Sayyidina Isa salam. The fourth spot in Raza Sharif is for Nabi, Nabi Isa salam. So he's even showing, no he's even in my home, how could an outside Prophet be in my home? He is my home, he is my Ahlul Bayt literally. When you go from Medina to Munawwara, he's from Ahlul Bayt of Rasul The Christians have many surprises waiting for them. <laughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi <coughs> Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, you have taught us that Saint George is Sayyidina Khidr. Mm. Sayyidi, does the legend of King Arthur also have Islamic roots since many themes in the story seem similar to two tariqah teachings? Yeah, we have to find what the, the traditional name, I don't think he was Artur. So this, <laughs> I think a lot of these names are, are kind of uh, modifications of Latin but no doubt any type of chivalry and even the structure of the 
the moat and the palace having four pillars and a central house is a design of the qalb. So when you look at the aerial photo of the qalb, it has four circles like the four towers of a castle and has a blue around all of them like the ocean moat, the water moat that they would put so that the, the people could not attack without going through a bridge. So it would save the castle from people riding their horses coming directly to attack the castle. And then the center is the residence of that castle. So this traditional system and understanding of the castle and kingdom was designed off of that reality and its haqqaiqs. And all of their early understandings of the images of a Merlin which was like a Mawlana and the association that Merlin had with the dragons. So it means the king always had like a wazir who had very powerful spiritual knowledges and very connected to supernatural entities. By means of that he could heal and protect the nation. So this, this culture was rich in these realities and still to today the English landscape Mawlana Shaykh describes is, is a very important landscape spiritually because of the, 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 the deep realities that existed there. And that their concept of the dragon and the, the one whom would protect and, and fight the, the evil dragons, the shaitans had. So he was a dragon slayer that he, he taught them and, and taught them how to fight and to slay all the shayateen and all the difficulties that were being put upon the earth. So there are good dragons and bad dragons. The good ones under the command of Sayyidina Malik and that Malik the angel and the guardian of paradise is a dragon, black and under his command are Zabanis and they are infinite in number. So by means of our paradise, our paradise would only be as good as if it could be protected. So the benefit of having a paradise is only if it can be protected from shaitan. So Allah put his most powerful of creations to guard the paradise. So Sayyidina Malik is an angel that is a dragon and so that represents then the, the reality of Sayyidina Malik coming to protect the paradise servants. If they walk on the earth then security from paradise must accompany them to keep these paradise people protected on the abode of this earth, inshaAllah. <laughs> Without that protection there would be nothing. InshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Can you expand why we lose things that are close to us? Thank you for your immense teachings and forgive me for any bad adab. Why you lose things that are close to you, like your keys or like people? If you lose your keys I don't know, you have to get like air tag and put some technology on it. <coughs> if it's people then Allah takes whom He wants and tests people how He wants and only through testing can one's heart become and their faith become stronger and stronger. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us and grant us strong faith, love of Sayyidina Muhammad love of Divinely Presence, love of awliya Allah fi samai wa fil ard wa ila sharaf al-Nabi kiram. Shbandiyatul Aliya wa sayyidi sadatina wa siddiqeen al-Fatiha. Laki shabbat ya Rasul Kareem. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan.
has many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.